Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Stay. This is Coloring Bliss. I have little sweet Rose back here with me. And today we're going to be unboxing and getting a first impressions of the Color Cubes by Sarah Renee Clark. I am really excited about color. I am a color person. I love color theory, color wheels, swatching colors, playing with colors color <laughs> and so I'm excited to see if this tool right here is something that will add to my color passion will it help me pick colors will it inspire me those are the questions I have so let's get started by doing an unboxing of the color cubes now just a second Jennifer before you start unboxing I want to tell all of you that we are going to do a giveaway we're going to be giving away three of these full bundles of the two color cubes so three of you will be a lucky winner this time uh, I have lots of details for you about the giveaway you can either visit the link in the video description or wait till the end of the video when I'll tell you all about it okay let's get back to unboxing this is the color cube bundle I bought the bundle and that's what we're doing for the giveaway you get both volume one and volume two in one big beautiful box this is how it came got a little damaged shipping but not bad it looks pretty good to me so let's take a peek together inside this big box all right it says Sarah Renee Clark on it color cube volume one and volume two and it has a nice oh it says right there to open here can you see that let me see if I yeah open here uh, when you open it up there's some fun words here let me show you it says a new world of color inspiration awaits inside show off your color cubes here it says all right we got some packaging and then here are the two color cubes all shrink wrapped so that's nice and this is a really this would be a good box for storing um, color supplies so I will hold on to this box for sure and it to Steve for now but here we've got the two boxes and they're slightly different the way that they are printed I wondered if one would say volume one and volume two I, I think I took them out so this is volume one and this is volume two all right we need to break into the plastic is it just me or are we getting real Rubik's Cube vibes here going on <laughs> I keep thinking it's like a Rubik's Cube look at all the sides of the cube are covered in all the squares that's really pretty all right here we go this is the first box oh and this is volume two I got it wrong I mixed <laughs> them up when I opened them up so let's let's look in volume one first color cube volume one and what do we have here oh it's a sticker a number one sticker so that we can put it on the outside of the box that's very thoughtful and I guess it depends on how you display the box in your art right. studio you could put the one wherever on the you side, on yeah. the top yeah so that's cool instructions okay so I'm looking inside it's really nice the way it reminds me now that it's open it makes me think of like um, card games or like table games where you oh, have yeah. your cards that you select that so oh, yeah. feels very game like <laughs> to me instructions using a color palette how to match the colors hex codes tints and shades color names appearance of colors and how to share your art so lots of instructions here. I'll hold it up so that you can read it. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm totally not doing a good job holding it still, but there you go. Okay, this is what we've come for though, is what the rest of them are. And I've got Steve here with me because he's interested in seeing how this works too. So here is the very first card and it's got a number 001 and I assume the last card is 250 yep so there's 250 different cards in here and this is what the front looks like so you get an inspirational photo and if you've been around the art world at all and especially on Pinterest you've seen color schemes like this before there's a lot of companies out there that create them like 
paint companies and uh, there's just all kinds of companies out there that do something similar where they use a really pretty photo and then they pull colors out of this photo. In fact, Adobe, doesn't Adobe have an app that you can use? Yeah, you can upload a photo and it'll pull it out. Yeah, Adobe so color. it's adobe.color. Or color.adobe.com. Oh, color.adobe.com. So if you have a beautiful photo that you want to do something similar to this, then try that out. It's It's really fun to play around with that. So that's what we get in the front. We get to see the pretty inspirational photo. And then on the back, look at that. Okay, so the front has one, two, three, four, five colors. One, two, three, four, five different colors again on the back with a name for each color. And then Steve, we've got, these are called hex codes, right? Yeah. So will you explain to us what a hex code is. Yeah, those are primarily used in uh, building websites. Oh. And it's how you specify a color on a website. So it's like the computery name of a color. Right. Oh, cool. Okay. I think I knew that, but I get all the um, CMYK, RGB, hex, <laughs> I get all of them confused. So that was good to know. And then she also provides over here an example of a light, medium, and dark. And again, if you guys have been around my channel at all, you know I love setting up all my tools in light, mediums, and darks. So this makes me excited because it's, it gives you a good example. And sometimes it's hard to envision. Like, for instance, the color yellow. What is a light yellow? Yeah, and it's right there. And what <laughs> is a dark yellow? Um, and that, for a long time, I didn't understand dark yellow. Steve had to teach me about dark yellow. <laughs> <laughs> but, yep, that's basically what we do when we try to put our colors together into tritones. That's how uh, a light, medium, and dark. Although I think I would go a little lighter with my light because I like a good value difference between my colors. Okay, so that's card number one. I don't think we'll go through every single card. <laughs> we might be here for a little while, but look, there's food. There's, this is a book. So it's not all just nature, which I wondered and if they were all nature. it doesn't any color order either, does it? No, um, and that brings me to the fact that they have a digital. Sarah Renee Clark has a digital version of this, and I think that is searchable. So I think you can oh, search cool. by like red. Um, I'm not sure. In fact, that's a good question for Sarah Renee Clark. We have, we're going to have a little interview with her. And so I will ask her that question. But what I do like is that they're not all nature, that they have different feels to them. Let's see if I were to randomly pick from the center. Oh, there's a beautiful autumnal one. Love autumn yeah. colors. Very masculine. Autumn colors are very masculine. So that doesn't surprise me that you like that. Let's see, let's look at the very last one. A nice icy wintry one. Monochromatic, I would say. Wouldn't you call that monochromatic? Yeah. Really pretty. I like this. This is really neat. I'm a sucker for things I can hold in my hands. That I learn really well when I can hold it in my hands. So I like this one reason we didn't get the digital version of it is because I was really interested in the actual tangible version. Right, right. <laughs> I'm a, a touchy-feely kind of artist. <laughs> okay, oh, and I had a question. Can you put the lid on either way? You can. Oh, <laughs> that's really nice. I was worried there would be just, you know, one way that you had to do it, but that's a no-brainer. I think I'll put my number one down here below the the lid. I think that's where I'll put my number one. Let's take a peek in the second cube. So we have 250 colors here, color schemes, and 250 more here. Yeah, so a total colors. of 500. This, the boxes are just lovely. They're really pretty. Yeah, really well built. And there's a number two for me. And again, we have an instructions card, and then it gets right into it. Um, the instruction card looks the same. So here we have, it starts at 251. That was one question I had was, <laughs> would it start all over again? 
Um, am I going to be going crazy trying to keep all these cards in order? <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder, comment below if you own the cubes. Do you keep the cards in order or do you really just let it go? Since there's no, at least as far as we can tell, there right. doesn't seem to be any color order. So as I was reading, matter. I think the card numbers are referred to in the digital version. Mm. So, but I, you know, I think I, I would try to just let it go. 252 so that one's a little different look at that that one has the picture um, portrait instead of landscape with the colors on the side that's a little bit different look at that pretty color scheme yeah, that's so Ooh, pretty that's a really pretty one makes me want to color I gotta say I'm feeling a little the itch to pick a color scheme and do some coloring um, but I'm waiting because we're going to do that in next week's video. So make sure you subscribe and hit like on this video and s hit the bell notification so that you'll be notified next week. I'll be actually diving in and doing some coloring with these. But I, I think it would be really fun. Oh, look, there's a little bike. See, I've already like worried I've lost the order. I don't know if my OCD-ish, I don't have OCD, but you know, my tendencies, yeah. <laughs> my OCD tendency would be to keep these all exactly in the right order. High quality, the cards are nice and thick. They're not laminated, so they're not shiny, they're not hard to read. Oh, and the, the writing isn't hard to read. Look at that really nice aerial type writing, you know, that makes me happy. No metallics or shiny things to make my eyes unhappy. All right, now that we've had our first little peek inside of the color cubes, let's talk about price and cost. Um, I'm going to be quoting the prices for here in the USA because that's all I know. <laughs> so they are $40 per cube. Or you can do like I did and buy the bundle with both cubes and then it's only $67 for the bundle. Which I, I you know, feeling the quality and all the cards you're getting, I, I kind of feel like it's a good price. $67 for the two feels really good. Um, I think if it was closer to like the $80 or the $100 mark, I might feel like it's a little pricey, but $67 feels really good to me. You can also buy, um, there's the full color suite that has all the digital versions included with this, and that's $99, but I'll let you go read about that because I don't know much about the digital versions. All I know is this right here. Now, we got free shipping. They had, um, didn't they have shipping upgrades that you could yeah. do? Yeah, to get it a little faster, like $10 or $20. Yeah, so in the U.S., this cost me $67 free shipping, so that's pretty cool. All right, so that's what I saw available on her website. All right, we're going to put links to these cubes in the video description in case you want to go read all about it and see all the details. So look for that. And also, while you're there looking for those links, check out the link to our giveaway. Now, as you can see, I have a few more questions that I haven't had answered quite yet about these color cubes. So we thought it would be fun to invite Sarah Renee Clark to answer those questions for us. So let's look at that fun interview. So how did you come up with the idea for the color cubes? It started as a free thing. So people already, you know, you find a lot of color palettes on Pinterest and I started making my own color palettes because Picking colors has always been intuitive to me, but when I started talking to my audience, everyone was constantly asking, how do you pick colors that work all the time? And so I thought, well, let's make some color palettes and help them out because color palettes are a really good quick way. You don't have to learn the color wheel. You can just find a picture, get inspired by it and work from that. Um, and so I started making them, putting them on Pinterest. I put some on my website and we had so many people come to my website because of those. And the biggest comment we kept getting was, can you get this in a way that I can print it off? Oh. So that was our next step. We're like, okay, let's put it in a like PDF. And initially we just made um, the blog posts that I did with the palettes were all like 25 in each post. And so I made them into little books that were like $5 just to print out. You can oh. print out the things. I added the extra um, RGB and hex codes and stuff like that. And then as we're doing that, we thought, well, what if we actually did a book that was all of them together? So I spent a few months 
sorting the colors into categories, decided to make it interactive um, so that people could click on a menu and then find a color or find a topic and then find a color palette. And so that was what we um, now know as the color catalog that we brought that out um, and overnight it sold so many more than all of our other products on our website combined at that point wow. that we just went, well, we had no idea that this would be, people would be so interested in this, especially because all of the same information was already on our website. It was free. Um, but people just loved being able to have something on their own iPad. It was sorted. It was easy to access. And so then over the next four years, we, the color catalog, we had volume one, we ended up making a volume two. And again, it was just so popular and so many people were requesting it. And the biggest thing people kept saying is I wish it was a printed book. I wish I could hold it in my hands, even to the point we had people saying, I refuse to buy it because I hate technology and I want it in my hands. And the one thing I initially held off on that because printing in color is very expensive to do, but we had started doing our coloring planner, which uh, I have one here. People don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, we started manufacturing our coloring planner. So because we had a contact with a manufacturer, we thought, well, let's see if we can start thinking about this. And in thinking about how I would want the color palettes, I kept thinking, I don't want to have to flip back and forth in the book I want to be able to kind of like compare them side by side. And I pictured, you know, when you go to the hardware store and you get paint swatches, or I thought about a Trivial Pursuit board game and the packaging they had for their cards where they had like the lid that sat out. I thought that was really cool. I wonder if we could build something like that. So it's almost like a game, but it's color palettes. Um, and so we started to work on that idea. I was so confident that this answered what our audience were asking for, that we didn't even tell people it was coming. We just launched it cold. And in the first two days, we sold thousands of them, uh, both to people that already had the color catalog and to people that had none of it. And it just fast became like a life changing product in the business. And then since then, we've just seen that it's just gone so much beyond coloring, which is what we started with into just about everything, because everything needs colors. So every, you need to choose colors for everything you do. So yep. um, yeah, that's the story. That's so great. When I did the unboxing, that my impression right off was something out of a board game. It felt like, like when you have those cards. So your vision was exactly what I interpreted when I opened it. And it was so, yeah. the packaging is so pretty and it's, it's, a, it's a, a cool experience to open it. So you did well, really And know. that's one thing as well. Yeah. I said, if we're going to do it, I, I actually, we went through a few different prototypes and we had to resize the cards because I wanted it in a cube. Yeah. And I wanted the cube to be useful. So actually, I don't know if people are aware, but the the cube around the outside is actually a CMYK or CMY RGB uh, design itself. So the corners, you've got um, your cyan, your magenta, and your yellow. And then on the opposite corners, you've got the red, the blue, and the green. Um, so you can even use this to kind of like if you go any direction, you've got an analogous color palette even on this. And I thought if we can make the box pretty, admittedly, yeah. if you make the box pretty, everyone will want it. You know, the unboxing experience is so important. <laughs> yeah. And there's something special. I mean, I like digital products. I'm a digital person, but I, I am really into having it in my hand and being able to manipulate it and use it. So I think it really hits out of the ballpark for that. So that's Yeah, really thank you. Okay, so the next question I have is, how do you use the color cube in your own art? I am someone who is pretty good with colors. So I don't necessarily need it in terms of helping me to pick colors that work well together. Where I use it is to help me to not pick the same colors every time. Mm -hmm. So if I was to pick a color at random, I pretty much always start with teal. It's my favorite color. <laughs> you can, my chair is teal, you know. Um, so I tend to always pick teal and then I'm like, oh, what do I do next? So I tend to always go for analogous palettes. So like if, so I would start here and I end up with max, matching it with blue and then I often end up in the purple and the pink. And I use that color palette all the time. It's my go-to. And then if I was to try to think of something different then I, because especially if you've got a color wheel, you go for the bright colors and then you just run across here and there's a color palette. That's the kind of stuff I would do from the color wheel, but it was really hard to then uh, challenge myself to work with different colors and 
work outside of my own head in that. So I actually use it a lot myself just to help me to try new things. So like there's a sunset range in there. And so when I'm thinking of what can I do in a sky, rather than just going for blue or even going for a sunset with red, orange, yellow, I would look and go, what can I do that's completely different? And there's a few sunsets in there that are like a purple to a pink to a peach. And so they're colors that I probably wouldn't have grabbed or thought on my own, but by having the color palette to start with, I end up using them. Sometimes I'm like, I don't know if this is going to work. I get a bit nervous, but by the end it always does. <laughs> so I use it just to think outside the box. I use it for coloring. I use it mostly for coloring books because that's what I do, but I have used it sometimes in uh, planning like our, our covers for our products. I sometimes get it for inspiration for that. Um, I also don't always stick to a color palette. I tend to use it as a starting off point and then I'll add colors or I'll take two color palettes and put them together. Mm -hmm. So for people that are a bit more advanced with colors, you can still use it, but you're not stuck to it. You're not limited to the ranges on the card. You can put two together. You can add more colors. You can add different shades. And um, there's really a lot of options. It's really just intended to be a starting point. That's great. So that kind of leads me to one of the questions is what's one of piece of advice that you would give someone who has a lot of trouble picking colors? I think it's a really good idea to try to stick with just a few colors. Um, so instead of working with every color under the sun, pick one or two main colors. And then from there, once you've sort of filled a lot of those areas, you can go darker and lighter shades. So like if you're doing blue, pick some darker and lighter blues, but stick with one one color to start with, maybe two. And then if you are wanting to add colors, keep the rest fairly minimal. So I actually like five or six colors as a good starting point, which is why most of the cards have five or six colors, even though the pictures themselves off, I mean, they have millions of colors in a photo. So there are a lot more colors I could have picked out, uh, but I tried to pick five or six because I think that's a really good number to stop for most people. And then if you are wanting more color, then you just really reduce how much of that color you add. But as a general rule, pick one or two colors and then everything else is kind of what you would call accent colors, just little details rather than the whole picture being overtaken with just a mess of colors. Right. That's really good advice. Thank you. I like that. Okay. Let's see. What are some fun and creative ways that you've seen some of your customers use the color cube? We've had a surprising variety. So I obviously created it with the expectation people would use it for coloring. And then I thought, well, obviously people can use it for anything. So, you know, painting, mixed media, card making, all that kind of stuff. Card making's probably been the most popular use that people have had with it. Um, I'd never even considered card making myself until I saw so many people using the color palettes for it. Um, but we've also had some really different things that I wouldn't have thought of. So we've had some people using it to design uh, different patterns for nail art Ooh. And they do like a dipped nail with like a pattern based off the color cube. We've had people doing uh, rock painting. We've had someone that used to do eyeshadow and they'd use the palette on and do like really crazy eyeshadow. Oh. Um, we've seen people do cake decorating or like cookie decorating. People use it for like polymer clay or making jewelry. Um, we've even seen people using it for like seashell art or things like crochet as well, knitting, all those. Like it's kind of there's no limits to the variety of things you can use it for. And we're always really surprised at some of the new pictures that we find on Instagram. If you search hashtag color cube, you'll see them all um, of just how creative people end up getting with it, that I'm just blown away. And it's giving me a million different arts that I want to try now. <laughs> yeah, I bet. That's really exciting to see that. You know, I've often thought about it, like the whole color theory thing when I'm picking out an outfit too, like. Yeah, what absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that would be fun in your closet to pull out a color cube and try to put together an outfit. Yeah. Hopefully you have enough clothes with variety yeah. of colors to make it work. But yeah, yeah, I don't know if I do. <laughs> okay, so I do have a question about the digital version because all I own are the actual color cubes. So yeah, the one, iPad version, yeah. Yeah. So one question I had is, is it searchable? So like if I wanted to search the color violet, could you search it by color or however, how other ways can you do the searching? 
Yeah. So the so one thing that people do get confused with, it's not actually an app. It is an interactive PDF. So it does mean that you can put it on any device, which is great, but it also means there are some features that I would love to have that we don't have. However, you can um, use some other programs to get those features. So for example, it doesn't have a built-in search. It does have browse. I'll explain that in a second. Um, but if you have another app that can search a PDF, then you could actually do your own version of a search with it. A lot of... Um, PDF readers will allow you to use a search function. Same with like marking favorite pages or um, writing your own notes on it. If you put it in the right program, so good notes would be one example, you can then actually add a whole lot more of your own features to it. You can even add pages in um, or you could make notes. You could write like it's got the spaces on it to write your pencil codes and stuff like that. You can do all of that if you use it in one of those programs. Um, the PDF itself, I've just pulled it up here. Uh, the PDF itself is designed more as to browse. So like on the, the home screen, you'll see you've got browse by colors, keywords, or collections. The collections is actually based off those blog posts that I originally created. Um, but if we go to colors, as an example, we do have there, what I've tried to do is categorize them into what seems like the most common versions of these colors. So uh -huh. the names of colors aren't specific to a brand because every brand uses different different names. Like if you try and find a magenta in every brand, they all look different, right? Absolutely. So I've tried to find what online is like the most um, common interpretation of the color mint, for example. Mm -hmm. And so I've put all of them together. So if you click mint, you now get all the palettes that have oh, mint that's in that's very nice. That's good. So, and you can do the same by categories where it's got all the categories here. And if you click on say food, um, it will show you all of the palettes that have food as a picture or food, oh. or food sort of colors. And from there, you can actually just click on one and it will open it up to the close up for you. Really good. Um, That's really good. And you'll see here too, the keywords and colors are listed here. They uh, actually match up with that whole system. So yeah. That's fantastic. So do you think the digital version or the, the tangible version is more popular? Definitely the actual cube. Um, okay. So the digital version... Uh, was that's what we started with and we actually do offer people both together so like when I use them I use them both together and they do meet different needs some people just want to have it in their hands some people want it to save space so the digital version allows you to like so or the way I use it the digital version allows you to kind of browse and find the right palette and then every card every page on there matches with the number mm. on the actual cards I'm just trying to open the box Very good. <laughs> um, they all match the cards here so 500 on here is the same as 500 in the book. So uh -huh. you can find the ones you want and then come through and just pull the numbers out. And that way you get the tangible cards to then compare side by side. Um, I used to print out the pages. We do. It does come with a printable version as well if people buy the digital one. It's a slightly higher print quality. It doesn't have all the category pages at the end because it's like otherwise it would be 300 pages long. Um, but that then allows people to just print it if they want to do it themselves. But we just... Uh, once you've got the cube, you don't need to print it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So is the cube available worldwide then? Yeah. So there's only a couple of countries we can't ship to just because the, honestly the postage gets lost. But most of the world um, we do ship to. We have fulfillment centres in the USA and in the UK and in Australia. So those countries, um, there is a free shipping option available for most locations in the US um, and all of Australia and all of UK. And then for people outside of those, we do offer shipping as well. And it will just come from the closest location. And sometimes, you know, there's extra fees and stuff with yeah. the shipping with those ones. Uh, but we try and keep it as cheap as we can. <laughs> we yeah. do kind of um, cover a bit of the extra shipping cost ourselves on some of these international ones to try and keep it like under $30 if we can, but yeah. Well, that's great. One question I had about the numbering system is, do you keep your color cube cards in numerical order or do you <laughs> just let them be? <laughs> I, ideally, yes, but uh, practically no. <laughs> okay, that's good. I, I try to. We do every now and then just go and put them back in order because it's so much easier. But the amount of times that I've just grabbed the whole cube and just put it on the table and just put them on and go, right, what do I want to use? Because <laughs> yeah. it's just fun. It's, it's a game. It's like yeah. it's fun to just pull all the cards out. So mine are almost never stay in order. <laughs> okay, well, that, that gives me the permission to just yeah. let them go. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Very yeah. good. Okay, well, again, congratulations. And thank you so much for taking time to talk to us and our community. 
Well, thank you. I hope you enjoy playing with it yourself and can't wait to see what you come up with. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait for you to see. <laughs> I just want to say thank you, Sarah, for taking the time to come onto our channel and answer those questions for us. That was really fun to talk to you. And I'm excited about these color cubes. Like I said, next week, in next week's video, I'm going to be coloring with them and putting them to action. I, I kind of want to try multiple color schemes and see how easy it is to pick the colors out of my color pencil set, that kind of thing. I'm excited about it. And now we're going to talk about our giveaway. All right, do you want a chance to win your own big bundle here with Color Cube 1 and 2? It's a $67 value, and we're going to pick three winners. Now, this begins on April 10th, 2024, and ends on April 24th, 2024. So you only have two weeks to get your entries in, and there is a lot of different ways to enter. So. Follow the link in the video description and come on over and get your entries in. We will be announcing the winner via email April 25th. Well, not the winner, the three winners on April 25th. So with this, I have to do the scam alert, scam alert. Please remember that we do have scammers trying to take advantage of you and I'm going to have Steve put up on the screen all the things to look for to make sure you're not being scammed. But the most important thing is that Steve and I will never ask for money from you to receive your prize. We won't charge you for shipping or for your prize at all. So if someone says you've won and asks you for money, that's a scam. Please run away and block them and hide them and never talk to them again. <laughs> So I want everybody to have fun with this giveaway. So good luck everyone. And remember the winner will be announced April 25th. And I can't wait to see you in the next video where we actually do some coloring with the color cube. Put these to work. Exercise with them. Stretch <laughs> our color picking muscles and have some fun. So we'll see you next week. And I hope you all have a wonderful, colorful, blissful day. Bye bye everyone.